Hello, this is Akira from Key Operation. Today we are at the beach in Ishiki in Hayama. And we would like to show you one of the villas that we completed recently. Hayama is a beautiful seaside town situated on the Miura Peninsula. It is 60 kilometers away from Tokyo. Now we are at the Ishiki Beach, one of the most well known in the area. The beach is rather calm and discreet compared to the other beaches, maybe because we have the Emperor's Villa here. Since the Meiji period in the 19th century, after the Samurai period, this area had many villas from the VIP people from the government. The area where we have the site used to be the villa from the politician called Taro Katsura. He was a general and also became a prime minister and led the war against Russia in the 19th century. The important meeting was held at the villa at the time during the war and now the villa is all split in small pieces of land. There was a large house like 40 years ago, but as the land was split into pieces, the land lost the required two meter width access to the road and the land was all empty for many years. As our client has another house on the other side, the two-thirds of the private road was available for the land and will fulfill the two-meter access to the road. There are many narrow passages in the area and the houses are quite close to each other. Even though it is not urban area, as the mountains are quite close to the sea, the land is quite narrow and the area is quite dense. The area is stepping down towards the sea from the mountainside. The adjacent land at the north is higher than the site and the house at the north is very close to the site border and looking down to the site. Land on the south is lower than the site. At the early design stage, we were studying the setting out and we were looking at the smaller buffer exterior space between the adjacent land. As we were developing the design, the client requested to introduce a swimming pool and that made us think to cover the pool from the adjacent houses at the north. However, if the bottoms are too high, that would disturb the view to the sea from the house at the north. Originally, we had the volume in L shape, then we split the volume in five pieces based on the function of the house. Then we made the volume to have the pitch roof and control the relation with adjacent buildings. So let's look through the volumes in wheel. So this is a, the storage volume where we contain our maintenance kit for the swimming pool and some barbecue and some external furniture. And then uh, we have the, the bathroom and the car park volume here, where we have the bathroom. And then this is the, the dining volume where we have the kitchen and the dining. And then we have this living room volume at that corner and this volume is a bedroom volume. The bedroom volume has two stories. The dining volume is lower at the back that it gives the space and the light to the garden of the house behind. The living volume is high in the greenhouse which is fairly close to the side border. We tried to respect the view to the sea from the greenhouse so we made the lower part roof very low. Here's the approach to the house. We used to have the wall against this private street, but we made it open like this. Actually, this stone is reused. We used the, the one which used to be here and made it lower. So now the space is quite open, so it's easier to access by car. And we have this pavement along the slope, and here's the car park. The, one of the characters of the site is the three large camphor trees. We also have some more on the other side as well. We heard that these trees are planted after the war against Russia as a memory. These trees influence a lot our layout of the volumes. Here we see two volumes. This is the storage volume and this is the, the bathroom and car park volume. As we want to make the appearance subtle, we make the roof of the volume lower towards the front. We also avoided to have any windows towards the front. 
We wanted to make them look like just simple huts. Here's the back access to the house. We have the internal car park access and the back of the dining volume. When you come back from the beach, you want to drop off your sand and you can use this shower here. And in between the two volumes, we have the main approach. We go up the steps towards the courtyard. Here we have the hidden door towards the car park. And now we're back at the back approach. So I'm back from the car park. And here we have a large window, which is actually uh, a bathroom with a jet seat. And we carry on. And now we're approaching to the entrance, which is here. Here's the entrance, which is the space between the bathroom volume and the dining volume. In Japan, we normally take off our shoes at the entrance, but as you normally go in and out through the large window of the dining, in case of this house, we kept our shoes on. So our entrance is smaller than usual because you don't need any cupboard for the shoes. And here we have another door on this side, which is the backside entrance. Here's the backside approach where we saw earlier and we have a nice garden here where you can see from the courtyard through the two glass doors. Okay, now let's go to the bathroom side. The door towards the bathroom is a same wood cladding as external walls, so it's kind of half hidden. Um, let's go inside. And here we have the hand basin, and this is the washing room area here. And this room itself is a changing room. Most probably this room will be the first place where the guests will come in this house. They will change the swimming costume here. Now we're at the bathroom. So we have the shower here and the, the jacuzzi. So the main feature here is the sauna, which is electric. So after you're heated up, you can take a shower here or dip yourself in the cold water in the bathtub and cool down. Otherwise, you can go out to the pool side through this window and get into the pool. Here we have another external shower, same style as the one outside, which is at the car park. So now I'm back from the bathroom, coming back to the entrance. And let's go towards the dining volume side. And here we have the, the interphone and switches for the light, which shows uh, the plan of the building, so it's easy to see where you switch it on and off. And we have some cupboard as a cloak. And then we have the, the toilets. So now we have the kitchen. The kitchen is facing the dining, and we have the some Viking grill here, and we have some cupboards and the sink. And actually, this is a cupboard for the rice cooker, which actually slides out. And actually, even though you don't slide out, you can use the extractor fan so that uh, you can extract the steam from the rice cooker. So here we have the, the pantry where we put our food inside. And we also have another door. And here's an access to the back. And we can put our bin here so it can go directly from the kitchen. So this side we have the sink and we have some switches and sockets on the edge of the counter as well and um, we have also some cupboard on the other side too and these panels are made of cement and plywood combined 
and here we have the dining table made of ash and you have some nice antique chairs as well. The pendant light for the table has both the light on the table but also the upper lights towards the timber clad in ceiling as well. The ceiling is just following the shape of the roof which we saw from outside earlier. There is no light on the ceiling nor any services. The air conditioning is not from the ceiling but from the wall from the punker diffuser. At the dining we have a large window here, so let's open it. This is the timber window sash, which is well insulated and it has a good gear that it slides very well. So once you open all the windows, the dining area and the deck, the courtyard, is really well connected. You can use as one space. In front of the window, we have the pergola made of galvanized steel. This pergola will give a shade in front of the window. And if you want to have lunch outside, you can put down the shade. So this program is actually continuing towards inside the gaps between the volumes and have the top lights and these metal louvers are used as a shading for the top lights. Here's a gap between the dining and the living. There's a level difference between the dining and the living area. The ground level is going up toward that corner and the level difference within the site is more than 2 meters. Even though we're burying the building more than 1.5 meter at the corner, we still lift it like 40 centimeter, which also helps to separate the dining and the living softly. Even though the dining volume and the living volumes are separated at the roof, the lower part is all open and connected. In general, we wanted to make the house finish to be casual and be rough. So we use a precast concrete drain gutter for the step. Here we take off our shoes. Most of the volumes have timber structure, but only these living and dining volumes are made of steel structure. Actually, these two volumes are one volume structure, and at this area, there's only one steel post to support the vertical load. As same as the dining volume, we have a tilted roof and the ceiling following the shape of the roof. We have a roof window so that the light can come through like this. During the night, we have a linear light fitting on this wall and it can lift the timber finish ceiling. On this side of the living room, we have a fireplace. Actually, this is an integrated stove. So in order to match the scale of this living room, we made the width of the breast wider. And we also made the opening wider as well. Actually, this stove is quite advanced, so it can be manipulated with a smartphone. For this living room, we have the recessed TV monitor. Normally, it is hidden inside the cupboard and it will be lifted up electronically when you want to see. So now, let's go to the next volume. So here's a gap space between the living volume and the bedroom volume. This is the entry window from the courtyard and we also have another window on the other side as well. So this is the window on the other side. When you open both sides, the wind will go through very well. The cladding of this wall are as same as external timber cladding. And pergola of the courtyard is coming towards inside this gap. The floor finish is the same as external deck. And you can walk with your shoes on. And when you open the concealed shoe cupboard, you can take out your shoes and go out to the courtyard.
So now let's go through this corridor. By the way, we have a hidden mosquito net here. Yes. In Japan, we have these nets for most of the windows for the residential buildings. But for the window against the dining and the living, we didn't have, as we wanted to use the space continuously. Only for the entrance for the bedrooms and the windows of the bedrooms has these nets. At this corridor, we have a toilet here. And then we have a window only at the lower part in order not to see the neighbors. You can just see the green. And for this wall, we have a picture rail so you can have some picture on the wall as well. This is the first bedroom. We have a double bed and some cupboard and some desk as well. And from the window, you can go to the pool directly. And we can have a look at the second bedroom as well. This room, the arrangement is the same as the first one, but we have the twin bedroom. We have a desk as well, and we have a cupboard. And now we're going to the bathroom. Here's the second bathroom. This bathroom is more for daily use compared to the first one. This bathtub is quite compact and from the window you can see the front garden. Let's go to the second floor. Let's go upstairs. So now we're upstairs. We have the hand basin here as well and we have another toilet here. We go into the bedroom. On this side, we have a large sleeping space for large group. This is more like a dokan style. So you can take out the futons from the futon cupboard here and lay them on the floor and you can sleep like 10 people. And from this window, you can see the comfort tree with the swimming pool. From this window, you can see the courtyard. With the leaves and the branches of the last tree, you have a nice shade on the building. And also, it will hide the view from the courtyard towards the bedrooms. And on this window, you can see the sea of the Ishiki Beach. So I just came out the gap between the living room volume and the bedroom volume. And there are steps in front of the bedroom volume and because of the floor difference you can actually use as a seat in front of the, the courtyard. As mentioned before, this existing large camphor tree is so important for the whole building. It gives the shadow to the courtyard and the bedrooms. It hides the bedroom from the courtyard and it gives a nice sound of the wind. Etc. We have respected the street when we did the layout of the volumes. And the main reason why we have the bedroom volume roof to lower down this way is because it's facing the tree of the courtyard. When we designed this courtyard, we thought about having a party with many guests around at the courtyard. So instead of having a normal garden chairs, we have created the benches all the way around including the steps which I mentioned earlier. Each group of people can enjoy the conversation at the place where they want. Here's the pool. The width is 3 meter and the length is 8 meter. It is not that big for swimming, but big enough to enjoy the water for summer. This is the filtering system of the swimming pool. Let's have a look inside. So it's quite compact. It's very, very small. This is a heat pump system for the swimming pool. This controls the temperature of the pool. So you can clean your courtyard and put together the leaves. And from this gap, you can put the leaves towards the garden. Our client has dogs, so we made a sliding gate for the dogs so that the dogs cannot jump out from the courtyard. We also have a large security door for when you're away.
Here's the external kitchen counter made of concrete. And once you open these metal cover, the sink in the tap will appear. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Now I want to enjoy the summer and the swimming pool. Bye bye.